I blame, I blame the geeks for the obesity epidemic. I, I blame geeks for a lot of the world's problems, right? But these geeks have developed applications specifically designed to send you fast food. Just eat and deliver out, right? deliver out a medical student cycling three miles to hand you a chicken tikka masala. Wow. <laughs> Answering the door in a pair of 1998 Brazil shorts. There's a couple of quid for yourself, mate. Get a nice book, right? What a breakthrough <laughs> that is for the humble man. Just you and your thumb deciding what food is coming. You don't even need to relay the gluttony to another human being. No when you're phoning a greatest hits Chinese, when you're just ordering everything you have ever heard of from the Chinese, and you've only said three, maybe four items, and the guy says anything else, and you need to start editing your order because he's just anything else to you far too early. Dad, I never got you your sesame prawn toast. The guy sounded fucking appalled. Sorry. <laughs> but you don't get that kind of judgment with your thumb. You can spend 80s just browsing takeaway places anywhere in the vicinity of your house. Sometimes I'm on there for hours. I don't, I don't even order. I just have a fucking perv just looking through. <laughs> pulled pork. I fucking love pulled pork. Pulled beef, right? I never knew they started pulling beef out. How come, how come they only pull pork and beef? Oh, surely chicken. They must, surely somebody's pulled a chicken. Got to be. <laughs> eggs. They must, you must get pulled eggs. I've done everything to an egg. Scrambled them, poached them fresh. Surely somebody's that's what I'm going to get in the morning. Pulled eggs on pulled toast. <laughs> How's like your tea, Kev? Ah, milk, sugar. Get a fucking pull, mate. Go on, yeah. <laughs> It's killed. It's killed something. Right, an app. Ordering takeaway food via an app, right? It's killed that excitement and the, the journey that you went on as a family when you had phoned a Chinese. Friday night, phoning a Chinese, right? You never had an app that you ordered the food and it told you your order had been accepted, it told you your food was being prepared, it told you your food was on the way. You even got to watch the driver pulling into your street watching the guy driving diagonally in a Toyota Prius. Fucking hell, Dynamo is a delivery driver now, look at this guy. <laughs> it's killed something. When you had phoned the Chinese, old school, Friday night, phoned the Chinese, and when you hung up the phone, you had fucking no idea the status or the progress of your order. You don't know if the guy on the phone even took the order serious. You don't know if he was just a... Uh, very good, mate. Aye, I'll fucking write that down, mate. Very good. You have no idea what was going on. Sitting watching some shitty game show, the whole family is aware that the Chinese has been phoned. It could come. It could come in 10 minutes. It happened before. Remember that time it came in just 10 minutes? I would get salmonella, but I would accept that then. I'm fucking starving. 20 minutes after the phone call. That's more realistic territory. That's when the volume on the telly gets turned in just ever so slightly as people's minds begin to leave the living room. We're now listening in for car engines anywhere in the area. 25 minutes, somebody takes a walk over to the window, just for a wee. <laughs> 30 minutes, somebody's up beside them. You've now got two watchmen on the front line here. Coming to, here we go, here we go, here's headlights, here we go! Oh, you bastard! It just turned at the last minute, sorry, sorry. The very last minute, honestly, I thought it was the, what's that, uh, 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 taxi, it's a taxi. <laughs> Would you two sit in your arse? It's not gonna come any quicker where you stand at the window or you sit in your arse, your mum is trying to get a lid on the situation before it gets out of control. 40 minute mark. Your mum is now up at the window, parting the two of you. You've now got three on the front line. Woe betide anybody who committed a crime in your street between the Chinese getting phoned and the Chinese arriving. Entire families here who could give a detailed statement on any activity that occurred. Somebody's not putting dog shite in the dog shite bin. Somebody's not putting plastic in the plastic bin. We have got three hungry bastards at this window prepared to grass. Where the fuck is the Chinese food? There's fingerprints on the glass. People's breath is steaming up the glass. 
caged animals at feeding time here. 45 minutes. I'm going to go and get the plates and the knives and the forks. <laughs> so at least when it does come, we're ready. Your mum has given everybody a plate. The telly has been fully muted. We're sat back down. We've got a knife and a fork and a plate. We're sitting with a knife and a fork and a plate as the time is ticking. The atmosphere is like the beginning of a fucking prison riot here. <laughs> One hour after the phone call. Fucking phone them back! <laughs> phone them back! Your dad's getting involved. Your dad is not prepared to sit back and watch his family starve at the hands of the lucky panda. Fucking phone them back! Phone them back! I'm going to phone them back! I'll phone them back! Your dad, who deemed himself incapable of phoning to place the original order. <laughs> but now there's an element of confrontation. He's all over it, I'll fucking phone them back, son. Put the number in, put the number in. I'm too seething to type, put it in, son. <laughs> I'm perfectly calm. I am perfectly calm. <laughs> Hi, we phoned a delivery about five hours ago. <laughs> It's on the way. I f is it on the way from fucking China, mate? Eh? <laughs> I'm saying, is it on the way from fucking China? I'm perfectly calm. I am perfectly calm. It's every weekend with these assholes. I I'm calm. I'm fucking calm. <laughs> I've got better be on the way, mate. We have used up our only phone call. We are now fully at the mercy, at the hands of the lucky panda. We're sitting there, knife, fork, plate, muted telly. An hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes, your dad, your dad starts eating a Kit Kat. <laughs> You've never seen such a rage come over your mother's face. It's like it's not even your mother anymore. She cannot believe what she has just seen. You're eating a Kit Kat. <laughs> an hour, an hour and 15 minutes we've waited. And you've decided, I'm going to have a fucking, it's going to be here any minute. And you've decided, you're going to have a Kit Kat. See you. You're a bastard. <laughs> fucking moron and a clown. You're going to have fucking chocolate between your teeth. Try to eat a chicken satay with chocolate. You've just ruined your fucking meal. I don't know why I ever married you. Do you know what? You're a fucking... The atmosphere is volatile, and then there would be a chap at the door. The lucky panda had come to bring some harmony back in the family, grab the money, wanting to be the hero, sprint to the door, open the door, and it is not the delivery driver. <laughs> that look, whichever family member or friend had picked such an inopportune time, even if it was an elderly relative, your gran braving a harsh winter's evening just to return some Tupperware or a few tea towels. You try so hard to offer a warm greeting, but gran. <laughs> gran, cards on the table. I'm fucking gutted to see you. <laughs> I thought you were the lucky panda, delivery driver. Everybody in the living room still thinks you are the lucky panda delivery driver and thinks that I'm going to walk in with a bag full of Chinese food. Instead, I'm going to have to walk in with you. So the humane thing to do is for me to shout in and let them know that you are here so they can get their grands here face on. Grand's here. Everyone else, grand in the door. How wonderful. Grand's here. You can hear the murmurs of discontent in the living room. It's fucking grand. I thought that was the food. It's fucking grand. Gran's here. This is the worst night of my fucking life. <laughs> I'm just going to stay for a bit. We've just done ourselves out a couple of onion rings and a spare rib. <laughs> a minute later, the lucky panda would show up and everything was, everything was fine. Got it. Food's fucking there. You're parading the catch. What we have been through, we have earned this. People are ripping the plastic bag apart. Fucking hyenas ripping through boxes of polystyrene. Every bit of polystyrene that got ripped open revealed another item of food that nobody ordered. They have sent us somebody else's delivery. What a sickening twist. <laughs> you, don't let Dad see that. Don't, your dad is going to need shot in the neck with a fucking tranquilizer dart here. But it's too late. He's grabbed it. The who the fuck's that? Who the fuck is Cassidy? Cassidy? Who the fuck? 
they've, they've no ordered any rice. What sick bastard phones a Chinese and does not order rice? We have been sent the hoose rice is his Chinese. Ladies and gentlemen of Glasgow, what an audience. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourselves. God bless. Thank you. What a crowd, what a city. As always, peace. Thank you. Good night.